Hey guys, welcome to the third match between Phoebus and Jiraiya. Jiraiya's tournament life on the line with this match. Phoebus on the edge of a finals berth of Hostile League Season 13 of BSL. Bottom right hand corner, Jiraiya as the blue Zerg. Upper right hand corner, we have Phoebus as the red Terran. Once again, check out the New Worlds map contest on Team Liquid. I actually was having this thought. I've actually... The, the economy is, you know, all over the place. Working, whatever. I'm solid with my job right now. But it's one of those things where, one, I want to be able to take care of my daughter long term. But the other thing is, is I really want to be able to fund the StarCraft community. And I'm realizing I'm not in a place to do it. So this is something I'm going to just throw out to the clever people. The StarCraft community has a lot of intelligent people in it. In a prior era, there was a big crossover between the poker players and Brood War players. Where a lot of people, it seemed like they were playing poker to basically fund their Brood War habit for a long period of time. So this is my thought. We should group together and just figure out some stock stuff or something to make money so that we can fund the brood war community and make it happen because i think if we're waiting around for companies to hop in and do it's not going to happen so i feel like we should group up make our lives so that we can uh, get in position where we can actually fund people to be professional brood war players as we want like yeah what do people think about that yeah start our own N <laughs> nft not really Actually, maybe we should. We should have a Brood War coin for like funding the Brood War community. Something like that. I don't know. Think about it. I could figure out Bitcoin or whatever, but I'd be into Brood War crypto, but I don't know that NFT is the way I'd want to go for a lot of ethical reasons, but a lot of other random stuff. But point being, think about it. Message me. Esports fund uh, is out there and doing well, but it's like, okay, how do we how do we group up people that have money that are dedicated to StarCraft so they can like live their lives, push into the community, uh, and then funnel funds into StarCraft. That's my thought. And rant. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe someone can clip it and put it on r slash brood war. Rely on you guys to do that. In the meantime, Dry with the 12th hatch opener, grabbing the spawning pool behind it. He Phoebus going for a front door seal. Phoebus grabbing a supply to building this initial marine, wants to get a head start on his economy to try to get a protected expansion. This is on good night, by the way. Drone scouting left-hand corner, actually holding position there now, potentially to go ahead and drop a third base now that this overlord has scouted, I believe scouted, yeah, that marine along that edge. Good games thus far, in my opinion. Extractor about halfway finished. Hatchery about natural... By the way, on that prior comment, like, I'm just need some guidance. I'll put in the work. I'm not into being dead weight. I, I'm very uncomfortable being dead weight in any situation. Uh, stuck on that thought now. Refinery planting down for Thebus off one barracks. So I wonder if he's going to. He does have the natural expansion here. I'm wondering if he's going to switch into mech play. Nine o'clock base being grabbed from Jiraiya. There is an SCV out in the field to potentially discover that. Six Zerglings peeling out in the field. Thus far, all three matches, Dry has opted for Lurker over Mutalisk play. In this instance, I wonder if there was... Oh, interesting. Engineering Bay first. So Engineering Bay first grab with the one racks. This is usually that anti mutalisk build. So actually, this is, might be where having a mid-game Zergling Flood and Lurkers to press this natural expansion would pay off for Jiraiya. Command Center being built with the natural expansion. Looks like this SCV scout is going to find that 9 o'clock base momentarily. This is kind of an anti-standard meta game, the two-hatch Muta game. However, Jiraiya still... We'll, we'll try to keep an eye on that, but still has not uh, morphed to Lair. Just sticking to 3 hatchery. Did that SCV scout it? I think that SCV scouted. Zergling's making their way up there. So it might just be... So Zergling's speed is going to finish in a moment here. He's still mining gas, so I assume there's some form of tech. Hatchery finishing at that 9 o'clock location. And now Lair starting at the 4.30 mark. A lot of Marines on the front. Just feels a bit delayed. Level 1 weapons on the way. I actually like this as a counter to potential Mutalist play overall. And a proxy barracks from Phoebus in the natural of the upper left-hand base. Is that the natural? It's not exactly. It's the third. So he's going to try to... I wonder if he's going to try to float this. I love Thebus's play. I'm not going to lie. Zergling scouts it, though. I think it was worth the risk. Cancels it. 
So it loses a bit of minerals, but that was worth the effort. That was honest, honestly almost luck. Zerglings flooding forward for Jiraiya. Lair, not that far from finishing that. SCV Scout looks like it's going to be picked off. I like at least the attempt. I think that was worth it. Hydra then being planted at the 9 o'clock base. So Jiraiya once again opting for 3 hatch Hydra rather than 3 hatch Mutalisk. Phoebus' CompSat station on the way. He's going to have level 1 weapons. And this actually ends up playing a little bit better against this style of play. Three barracks. Is this before Academy even? No, there's Academy finishing Stim right there. So three barracks being dropped. Phoebus dropping CompSat, seeing the natural and the main. I think he has to suspect that this is potentially a Lurker build. Because he is just piling on the barracks. So he's going for five racks level one weapons as a push, potentially. Factory behind this. One creep colony has been dropped. This tends to be very, very punishing. So kind of, it's interesting because that's like halfway in between. Oh, this might be a bad situation. Jiraiya has these Zerglings to the north. The Overlord sees the Medic Marines pressing forward. Phoebus dropping a bunker. Yeah, I think he's concerned about a potential bust. There are a lot of Zerglings to, depend, uh, to, potentially, blah, 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 to potentially aim for that bust. Is Jiraiya going to try to take the mid-map? I think Jiraiya might go for the middle expansion. He's got a drone in position to do so. Maybe not. Just cycling drones out to the 9 o'clock. Hydra will stand up. Four hatcheries now. Spreading out, so going for more of an economic play, but Jiraiya is going to need to get a lot of Lurkers very rapidly, because it's going to be five barracks worth of production. And level one weapons is there. So starting to move midfield. Still potential counterattack possibility for Jiraiya. Both players kind of scooting around each other. Evolution cha Chamber being dropped. I don't think Jiraiya's in that bad a position. Still not... He's just going to... Okay, he finished Lurker tech. I just missed it. Now grouping up mid-map. Still has this bunker to defend, potentially in the background. Sengas needs to keep that rolling. Does have the factory and machine shop. Also grabbing control tower. It's possible he's going to go for a drop. Lurker is holding that high ground plateau. And the macro continues. Right now, supplies even. Dry doing a very good job macro. He's holding the three bases. Phoebus may be a little bit confused upon not seeing the additional base and also not seeing the Zerglings dedicate to the attack. Dropping another CompSat at the natural to see how many Sutton Colonies there. There's only one. A fifth hatchery being dropped right there. Keep in mind these are whole position lurkers up on the high ground. Phoebus hasn't scanned there, so if he walked up to there, that would be suicide. Lurkers also at this location. I actually kind of like lurkers on this map as well, now that I think about it. Even worker count. And time progresses on. Dropship now out on the field. Siege tech being built. Upgraded. Some marines and medics, sorry, marines and a medic being scooped up to potentially go for a drop. Overlord looks like it's going to maybe be able to see that on location. Let's see if Jiraiya sees it as it's coming across. Looks like no. Not quite going to see that dropship as it's scooting across. More marines pressing forward, able to catch an overlord. But as far as a drop here, there is not a lot of defense. Jiraiya also was in the red briefly here. He's only got four supply to work with to maybe build something on location to provide some defense. And actually, it looks like it's going to be a big funnel from Phoebus into the main. He moved this attack force in position to scoop all of it up. Jiraiya pressing with the counterattack. Looks like Phoebus has plenty to deal with. However, the drones trying to counter... Trying to battle drones trying to fight this back. Some Hydralis that were produced at the natural now scooting up. But more units have been dropped. Let's see if they can go ahead and get in position. Thebus is distracted, though. The Lurker's able to plant right there. And they are at the natural expansion doing damage. So both players able to strike. However, I think Jiraiya got the raw end of this deal. More Medic and Marines flooding into the main. A Lurker is there to, to defend. So it's almost like the counterattack buying Jiraiya some life. Otherwise, I think that might have been a, a killing blow. Lurker's dropping. The Marines still holding. They've been cleaned up, but there's still Lurkers at the Natural. They're finally cleaned up as well. 
So Phoebus able to do some economic damage, a little bit of a threat on his natural expansion, not a killing attack there, but Jiraiya still lives. Lost a lot of drones for his effort, though. Level 1 Carapace will be online for him momentarily, now making his way towards Hive. So again, trying to play the long-term macro game, and we've seen that has not played out for him thus far. He's even in supply, though. And usually at this stage of the game, that is... Good for Zerg. Armory being plopped down, so it's possible we're going to see a tech switch. Double engineering bay keeping the upgrades rolling. We do have two factories down. So Thebus... I've heard a lot of complaints about this from Artosis, where it's like the be the worst of both worlds. But it's going to be a lot of siege tanks. It's going to cut into the science vessel count. Fewer marines as well. But it's going to be big mech to follow this up. I think that'll be okay, though, against the Lurker-Ling combination. However, once Zerglings get that Adrenal upgrade up up there, and also with the, the Filers, sometimes if you can get... Dropship just hanging out near that Overlord. Sometimes if you can get Vultures out on the map, get some Mines and some map control, ends up playing well. Level 1 weapons being upgraded, though. This is a big commit, though, from Phoebus off two bases. Maybe he's going to wander up and try to take a third here? Because Mech is expensive. Four Marines in this grouping. They might be able to loft up. I don't know that they're going to get a lot accomplished at that 9 o'clock. Lurkers wandering around midfield. Potentially to lay traps. The Science Vessels should be able to spot it. As they're making their way across. I love this Marine. has been very active in the meantime, making sure that additional bases haven't been grabbed out in the field. These Lurkers now being spotted. It looks like they're going to get... One of them's going to get a portion of these Siege Tanks. They're going to have to back off otherwise. So Thebus with the scary attack force in the middle of the map. Drop in the rear. Creep Colony was being planted. Some drones being harassed. I don't know that there's any kills. It looks like this is going to be cleaned up pretty easily. But a counterattack... I keep saying counterattack when it's just a straight-up attack... Phoebus walking in to the natural. The lurkers on that corner position able to catch some of the marines. Now walking forward. I don't know if Jiraiya has enough to defend this. The Defiler Mound just finishing. Only a level 1 carapace on these units. And the siege tanks pressing forward. Science vessels covering all of it. These overlords trying to get in the fight. Reinforcements streaming across the map. Jiraiya realizing that he needs to go for a two-pronged attack if he's going to break this. The Overlord's distracting some of the Marines in this, which is helpful. The Lurker's now positioning. So it looks like Jiraiya is going to be able to defend this. However, the fight is not over. Thebus moving up with another attack force. Science vessels are being picked out of the air, though. One science vessel left that Thebus needs to protect if he's going to get something out of this. Hydra is trying to come in from the right. Unfortunately, they're coming in piecemeal from both directions. The Lurkers look like it's going to be able to plant on those siege tanks. So Phoebus... Phoebus now in trouble. That attack force got white. Trying to float a command center that I don't think he can hold. Defiler Mound consumed, just about finished. Double Evolution Chamber in the, in the meantime. And Zergling Adrenal Glands also being upgraded, which is going to make this a very powerful Tier 3 army. Phoebus behind in supply. That 9 o'clock base very well saturated. Drone in position. Let's see if... That, how did it get past that Marine? How? Drone uh, is going to get cleaned up by that Marine. SCV's moving out. The main still has some mineral patches to its name, but... Yeah, this feels like it's late. Phoebus up in workers, but the Zergling's starting to flood forward. And I don't know that Phoebus can get enough of an army out on the map... To prevent, and some Zergling's going to go ahead and clean up that Marine to go, go ahead and open up that bottom left-hand base. I don't know that he can prevent a Defiler, Lurker, Ling army from establishing itself on the natural. Jiraiya not even going to wait for Defilers, just pressing in with the Lurkers. Never mind, he has a Defiler with this attack grouping. They're dropping Swarm. And this is usually, like, game-ending maneuvers here. So it looks like Jiraiya... In a strong position. Let's see if Phoebus can get something to defend this. He doesn't have any fire bats. The Defiler's still alive. How did that... How did that die? I thought that was burrowed. Maybe it wasn't burrowed in the background there. But the natural expansion getting obliterated. SCVs dying. In droves. Yeah, nothing getting accomplished here. A drop. However, at the 9 o'clock location. The Zergling... Sh and the Sunken Colonies... Well, maybe we'll be able to clean it up. Some, so some drones getting wiped out. So 
at least a distractionary attack. The Defiler has been irradiated in the midst of this, so not a game-ending maneuver now with the distraction from this counterattack drop, but still not a great position. So that's cleaned up. However, still the bottom left-hand corner is being grabbed. More reinforcements are moving up. Phoebus back down to two bases. And, ooh, that science vessel needs to be careful. Looks like it is going to be able to scoot out. I'm not sure that that base is going to hold. It's just kind of, how long is that going to remain undetected? It's kind of an afterthought for Dry to press into it and potentially take it out. Phoebus moving some Marines down. <clears throat> so it looks like he is going to be able to go ahead and potentially reestablish his natural expansion. But he's not in a good situation overall. High tech up, Ultralis Cavern down. Six o'clock base being grabbed. So Jiraiya in a nice position to just press his economy from here. Has a lot to work with. There's still this dropship, which is an X Factor. Some overlords also exposed on the field. And we'll see if Phoebus goes for them. That might be a mistake on his part, though. I think this is an empty dropship just to try to keep Jiraiya back. I think that is the play here. It's like, okay, let's distract her. Maybe just get the scouting information. So it's going to move. It's going to see the 6 o'clock base being produced. It's going to move across. See a large group of overlords. It's going to see this base now in production. There's no Nidus. So Dry does have to run on the ground to make it happen. Phoebus very aggressively trying to maybe take this 3 o'clock. That would be a huge risk. Yeah, just using the dropship to scout in the meantime. Ultralis on the field. No Carapace upgrade yet. Level 1 weapons is there, though. Also seeing a lack of Defilers actually out on the field. Carapace not that far off. But Thebus knowing he has to move now and take something out. Because otherwise he's just going to be running into a very gas-heavy Zerg. Jiraiya actually already rolling heavily in gas. That getting irradiated. I don't see any Scourge in the air. Jiraiya in the red. Yeah, never, never expect... Phoebus in any situation try to play defensively. The Ultralis pressing forward. There, Defiler dropping some Dark Swarm. That should be able to clean this attack force up. And the I wouldn't be surprised to see a GG immediately after this, though. Given the situation that you've got... 5 base Zerg. Plethora of gas. And you're sitting on basically 2 base in the midst of this. Main still mining, natural expansion. Well, actually, three base, technically. But those three bases are very, very light. And the science vessel, I don't know how long for life it is. Let's see if these hydralisks. This poor medic, just shaking in his boots at this location, just doesn't want to be part of this war anymore. Please let peace break out. Ultralis speed along the way. Zerglings now starting to move up. There's only a, sink, a sinkage tank and a bunker there to potentially defend this. Another dropship. Is that the same dropship? The same dropship. What a hero. Same dropship. Is it going to get scouted? Looks like it might have gotten scouted. I'm not sure if Jiraiya is going to react to it, though. Instead, he's just going to go ahead and pile in to this, th to this third base. The Ultra is having a little bit of trouble getting position. The Zergling's flooding in as well. Phoebus just sieging up on that high ground. He is able to irradiate the Defiler behind this, lifting off just to preserve SEVs. More Ultralists making their way forward. Another drop moving in. It's been the name of the game, Drop, Drop, Drop. But I don't know that he's going to get a lot accomplished here. It looks like he's going to ignore that and actually just go for the main. There is a lurker there already and a sunken colony. So Jiraiya now with the supply count lead. Marines stim packing forward. The command center redropping. Looks like he's going to be able to reclean this. The not opting to drop there. Maybe going to go for the six o'clock. Never mind. He is going to drop a couple units to try to harass these overlords. Phoebus able to re-establish the natural expansion, but Jiraiya in a very strong position. Double evolution chamber still rolling. Level 2 weapons almost maxed upgrades on the Ultralisks. Marines don't have level 3 armor just yet. Try to see if it's upgrading here in the background. Just now finishing. Level 2 weapons on mech. But all of a sudden Phoebus, who's in the red by the way, moving out with his entire army... Wants to engage this heads up. Decide his fate. Out in open field, but look at all these Ultralists barreling down on this position. Six Ultralists and more to come. 
Nice timing on that Irradiate, so it was on top of the Siege Tanks rather than on the Medic and Marines. The Science Vessels trying to make their way back. Now keep in mind, Phoebus usually would be okay in this situation, but losing a big mech army like this, that's costly. So that gets swept up. I actually like the uh, Ford Engineering Bay and Science Facility to try to provide scouting information. And this is starting to turn into one of those single-player map scenarios where you just see the Ultralisks flooding forward. It's like a cinematic. There's GG from Phoebus. Jiraiya taking the first game. So it is now 2-1 to one, moving into game four. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.